Hey guys, so today we're checking out the officially licensed Ram 3-inch front, 2-inch rear leveling kit fitting all 09-18 four-wheel drive Ram 1500s without air ride. Now this will be an incredibly easy and affordable mod for your truck that's going to create a better looking and more functional stance for your Ram while also allowing you to mount up to a 35 inch tire. Now this kit here will do a really good job at getting rid of that factory rake that you probably have in the front of your truck and if you have a heavy duty front bumper that's added some extra sag to the front, this will do a really good job at getting rid of that. Now not only will this help you out with just the aesthetics of your truck, but this will also increase your ground clearance, making it a little bit more functional when it comes to light off-road situations. Now the front end of the truck does sit pretty low, so the three inches in the front are gonna help you clear any smaller obstacles that previously you may have come in contact with, and that two inches in the rear is gonna help you out when it comes to departure angles. Now when it comes to tire size, again, this will fit up to a 35 inch tire, but both a 33 and a 35 fill up the wheel well very nicely while still allowing you some clearance for, again, those light off-road situations. So if you are looking to upgrade to a larger wheel and tire and you're looking for a kit that's going to accommodate for that, this is gonna do a great job. Now when it comes to the lift block size, the front is going to be roughly the same size as the rear. So uh, the front lift block is going to measure out to two inches tall, but combined with the suspension geometry and the spring compression in the front with that independent front suspension, that's where you're gonna get that three inches of lift in the front. Now because the rear has a solid axle, this rear spacer is just going to sit right underneath that spring and be true to size when it comes to that two inch fitment. So I would just keep that in mind when you do pull it out of the box and you see that they're the same size, um, it does have to do a lot with the spring compression and the suspension geometry. Now at the three inch front and the two inch rear, this is gonna be for the Ram owner who's looking for a little bit more height out of a leveling kit in comparison to those shorter options. Uh, nonetheless, this will be incredibly well built. Uh, the spacers themselves are going to be made of a aircraft grade billet aluminum material. Uh, they are CNC machined for a snug fit. They are going to be very durable and they're going to have a nice black powder coat finish on top to resist any corrosion on the aluminum underneath, keeping them looking good and also performing well for years to come on your truck. Not to mention this is gonna come with all the hardware in order to get this on your truck and it's gonna add a nice little branded logo or some branded styling to your truck as well inside the wheel wells and on that back axle there. Now with all that being said, these are gonna be roughly $250, making this incredibly affordable in comparison to other solutions. Some other more expensive choices may include different solutions in order to get that height, like a taller strut uh, or different components in the kit, uh, not just the spacers that you see here. So if you're looking for something that's simplistic and straightforward and still going to get you that added height for your truck for better ground clearance and a way better stance on the factory, then this is a great choice. So when it comes to install, this is gonna come in at a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about three hours to get the job done. So speaking of the install, one of our installers here is going to walk you through that process step by step. Let's go ahead and get into the install. Tools used for this installation, half inch impact gun, three eighths electric impact gun, large and small pry bars, a hammer, 15, 16 socket, 21, 17, 16, 15, and eight millimeter sockets, eight millimeter Allen head, needle nose pliers, cutting pliers, flat blade screwdriver, quarter inch drive ratchet, 18 millimeter wrench, 15 16 wrench, 21 millimeter wrench, 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench, and 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Hey guys, we're gonna watch this quick uninstall of our suspension here on our Dodge Ram, and then we'll jump right back into our install. All right, to kick things off, I'm gonna show you guys how to uninstall your factory strut here on our front driver's side. Now, of course, you wanna get your wheel out of the way. That's step number one. We're supported on a lift, but if you're working on the floor, make sure you have a floor jack properly supporting the weight of the vehicle. Moving on from there, we'll have to disconnect the ABS lines from the knuckle and from the brake line itself, just to make sure that when the knuckle drops down out of the upper control arm, we're not putting too much stress on those brake lines. All right, so for this ABS line, just follow it down to the back of your knuckle here. That's connected with a plastic clip. Just gonna wiggle that back and forth till it pops up. Now you wanna follow that guy up to the top here. That's connected to your brake line. That you're just gonna pull apart just like that. Now we have more slack on our brake line, so we're not putting tension on them. Next up, grab a 16 millimeter deep socket, and we're gonna remove the factory nut off of our sway bar end link. All right, set that aside. 
All right, next up, we're gonna disconnect our tie rod end. Now, before we get started, you wanna know that this is a 21 millimeter nut. Now, in some cases, if you use an impact gun on this, the entire stud will spin in that ball joint. You may need a 10 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench to get the nut off while holding that stud steady. For our first time, I'm gonna use our 21 millimeter deep socket in my air gun to get this guy off. All right, so ours didn't give us any trouble, but that is still worth noting. Now, before I take this guy out, I'm actually gonna leave it in and just put that nut a couple of threads on just to keep the entire hub assembly from rotating while tackling the upper control arm. All right, so next we're gonna do the upper control arm to the knuckle. Now, Ram uses a castle nut here, which has these open gaps all the way around, and through one of the gaps going through the stud itself is a metal retaining pin. We're gonna use needle nose pliers to pull that pin straight out. All right, set that aside. Now for this, I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I highly recommend picking up a set of ratcheting wrenches for this install. There's a lot of different aspects of this that ratcheting wrenches will be a lot easier to use. All right, so once we broke that loose, I can back this off with my hand. Now, big thing to remember is we have to dislodge the ball joint from the knuckle. You can see that this stud didn't break free with that. So I'm gonna leave this nut on a couple of threads. We're gonna grab our hammer and we're gonna swing and tap against here to dislodge that. And then we'll use a pry bar to pull it down and take our nut off. Now for this, you wanna grab a ball peen hammer and we're gonna tap right up against the side here of the knuckle. With that dislodged, you'll see that the upper control arm moves freely in there. Let's take our nut off. Once you have the castle nut and spacer out, set those aside. All right, so from here, we can go back to the tie rod end, take that nut off, lift the tie rod end out. I like to hang it up over that sway bar end link and then put our nut back on the stud just so we don't lose it. Here we can lift the upper control arm out of the knuckle. And what I like to do is just grab the upper control arm castle nut and thread it right back on again so we don't lose it, just like the tie rod end. All right, next up, we're gonna tackle the bottom strut bolt, holding it to the lower control arm. Now, the nut here, I'm gonna use a 15 16 deep socket on my impact gun, and I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt head on the inside. At this point, you can grab a ball peen hammer and just tap the end of that to pop it through. Some cases, you may be able to pull it straight out, if not, you can grab a flathead screwdriver and just stick it in there and hammer the back end of that. All right, so now we can focus on the top three strut tower nuts. Now grab a 15 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna use again the 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Again, this really comes in handy. We're gonna loosen up these three top nuts. All right, so now our strut is free. I'm gonna use a pry bar here between the lower control arm and the strut body at the bottom to pry this guy out of position. Now that we have our strut removed from our vehicle, we're gonna install our spacer on top of our strut. Um, if you see here, we have three larger holes and three smaller holes. Um, this is just gonna go on one way onto our uh, strut assembly. And, but before we do that, we're going to install our eight millimeter bolts that are going to go through our spacer and come out the other side. These will be the new bolts that we put through onto our housing that hold our strut on. We're going to use our old nuts um, to hold this onto here. Uh, and then once we get this all assembled, we'll install it onto our vehicle. So let's get started. So now we'll install these three uh, Allen head socket bolts through our spacer in these holes, and then we'll tighten them up with our eight millimeter on our impact gun.
And I'm gonna take my eight millimeter on my impact gun, tighten these up. So now that we have our studs installed in our spacer, we're gonna install our spacer onto our strut assembly. And we're gonna use our factory nuts here to hold this on. And then the new nuts that come into the kit, we're going to install on the top of this when we put this into the vehicle. So now I'm gonna install this on, I'm gonna drop the nuts down in, and I'm gonna tighten it with my gun with my 15 millimeter. And once I have that in place, then I'll just drop these nuts down inside. Try to get them started. Then I use my 15 millimeter. And now we have our spacer on, now we're ready to install it on our vehicle. So now we got our three inch block on, we're gonna install that up into our housing and install one of our nuts that was supplied into the kit. So now that we got our strut in place and we started our three top nuts, we're going to use some pry bars, which I've started doing and prying a bottom of our strut assembly here into the pocket where it sits. It takes a little bit of time to do it. You're gonna need some big pry bars like I have here and, we're, and you use them and pry it and get it into place. I have it close and now what I'm gonna do is take my pry bars, get it the rest of the way over and then start putting our big long bolt through the bottom. And then once we get that done, then we'll go and start assembling the rest of the suspension back together. And I'll show you how to do all that. So now what I'm gonna do is take both my pry bars. I'm gonna put one back here to hold the strut from popping out. And I'm gonna take my other one and wedge it underneath here and lift up a little bit. And as I lift, I'm gonna push in to try to get the pry bar to go under and push this back. And once I get it to the point where I have it close to lining up, I'm gonna end up just lifting up and then trying to start the bolt in the bottom. And get that bolt started. Pull my pry bars out, take my hammer, smack it in place. So now that we have our strut in place, we have our bottom bolt started, our three top bolts started. Um, we have the vehicle down on the ground. Now, if you're working on your vehicle and you just got it jacked up, I'm gonna use the jack here to jack up the suspension. That way I can start the nuts for the ball joint, the tie rod, and the sway bar link. It'll make it a lot easier. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take the jack, put it underneath, get it on the bottom ball joint, lift it up, get it in place, start all my, my uh, nuts, and then once I get that done, then we'll take it and then we'll start tightening everything down. So now I'm gonna hold my spindle in place and take my jack and start jacking up on the suspension. And I'll start my nut for our ball joint.
once we get that in place, I'm gonna start my sway bar nut, put my uh, bushing on and get that started. Once we get this started, I'll push in and install our tie rod in place and install our nut on our tie rod. Then we can start tightening everything up. Now we'll install our tie rod. And we'll put our nut on. And I'm gonna take my 21 millimeter on my impact gun Tighten this up. We're also gonna take our 21 millimeter and our 23 millimeter wrench. We're gonna tighten up our lower strut. And now we'll tighten our sway bar and our ball joint and our three 15 millimeters on top of our strut housing. So now we're gonna tighten up our bottom nut here for our ball joint, and then we'll tighten up our sway bar nut here. Um, when we tighten this one up, we're gonna stick a cotter pin through. You're gonna see that there's holes in the ball joint itself to put a cotter pin and insert one through and bend the tabs. So once we tighten this up, we'll put that through and bend the tabs, and then we'll go back over and tighten our sway bar nut up on our sway bar. So now I'm just gonna finish tightening up my nut, my ball joint. Install the cotter pin. We're gonna to wanna to bend the tabs. Pretty much like that. And then, now we'll tighten up our nut on our sway bar. Now we're gonna take my 16 millimeter on my gun Tighten up our tighten up our nut here. Now we'll go up and tighten our 15 millimeters up on top of our housing. Now I'm going to take my 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench, tighten up our three nuts on top that we started. And now you're gonna just wanna repeat that same procedure on the other side. We're gonna take a quick look at an uninstall of our rear suspension here on our RAM, and then we'll jump right back into our installation. All right, to kick off the uninstall in the rear, we've got our RAM up in the air, and I have two pole jacks supporting our rear axle. Now, if you're working on the ground, you'll want a hydraulic jack under the pumpkin or the differential, or you can put two hydraulic jacks, one on both sides of the differential. Now, that's gonna help support the weight. As we disconnect some suspension components, that's gonna hold that up, and then we'll slowly lower both sides down to release the tension on the spring in order to insert our leveling kit. Now, with that out of the way, I have an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench, which is gonna go a long way to help us get this off. And I also have a quarter inch ratchet with an eight millimeter socket. I'm gonna first focus on disconnecting our sway bar end link. Now I'm not gonna disconnect the side connecting it to the frame. I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar from the end link. That's an eight millimeter nut. Now, the reason I have both of these in my hand is because once I start loosening this up, the entire stud likes to spin. To get around that, I'm gonna put my 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench on our nut here. And I'm gonna put the eight millimeter socket on the end to hold the stud steady and then I'm gonna loosen this guy up. That way, stud stays still and we can get the nut off. For the rear with a solid rear axle, you're gonna do both sides at the same time. Take it off by hand. Now what I like to do is once that's disconnected, pull the end link out. What I like to do is just put the nut on the end just so we don't lose it. So now we're gonna do this on the other side. All right, and with that other side out of the way, the sway bar is free, you can swing that down. 
Next up, we're gonna disconnect our panhard bar. Now the panhard bar connects the axle to the frame. So it's connected to the axle on our driver's side and the frame on the passenger. So we only have to do one side. Just gotta get it disconnected from one or the other. So I'm gonna start here. Now this bolt goes all the way through and has a nut on the other side with a tab. So because of that tab, we're not gonna need to hold the nut side. That'll hit the frame and hold itself. So I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket to get this guy off. So the nut came off. There we go, and that's free. All right, now on the opposite side of our coil spring is our shock. We need to disconnect the shock from the bottom here where the 21 millimeter bolt goes through. Now I've got a 21 millimeter wrench holding on our nut and my 21 socket on the bolt head side. All right, so now we can just repeat that on the other side to tackle the shock bolt. All right, at this point, the only thing keeping this axle up right now are these two pole jacks. Now again, if you're working on the ground, you'll have a hydraulic jack most likely. If that is the case, this is the part we're gonna start decompressing. So we're gonna slowly lower these pole jacks down one by one to evenly bring this down and decompress our spring. Now again, if you're using that hydraulic jack, don't send it. You wanna make sure you're going very slowly decompressing it. Otherwise, these things can get a little violent shooting out of their spot. So slowly decompress and then we'll pop the spring off. Right, so I do a couple of turns on one side because now this is uneven. I'll do the other side and kind of bring it down incrementally. All right, once it starts decompressing, you'll start to hear a little bit of creaking coming from the coils. That's letting you know it's close to fully decompressed and you just saw it fall out. So this guy's completely loose and we're good to bring her down. Same thing on the other side. Once you can twist it, there's no more pressure or tension on it. So now at this point, we're just bringing it down low enough that we can get the spring actually out. All right, there you have it. All right, next step here, we're gonna get our spring out of place. And that rubber isolator at the top looks like this. Just wanna make sure that's still here. Now that we have our suspension apart, you can see that we have our pole jacks supporting our rear. We're gonna take our two inch spacer, install it in the bottom of our coil spring, and then install this into our vehicle. Now we have our coil spring. I have my two inch spacer on the bottom. I'm gonna take the coil spring, stick it up inside. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you get it up in place that the rubber grommet and your coil spring sits up in that pocket. I'm gonna push it up and get it started. So now I'm gonna take my pry bar and pry up on my bottom of my pocket. I have it sitting on the top there and then I'm gonna push it in place once I You wanna make sure that the top didn't come out and that it's sitting in the pocket. So next we're gonna reinstall our pan hard bar. What I'm gonna do is take a flat blade screwdriver. I'm gonna get behind it, line it up, pull the rear over a little bit, take the bolt, put it through, and smack it in with a hammer. Now I'm gonna take my 21 millimeter on my impact gun and tighten this up. It has a cage nut on the back, as you can see, and you just rest it against and then run it in. So now we're gonna install our sway bar link. What I'm gonna do is take my 18 millimeter put the sway bar link through the sway bar and then take our eight millimeter on our gun to hold our stud here from spinning and then tighten it up. Now I'll get that like that, put my wrench on here, take my gun, Next, we'll install our shock. 
Now that we have our pan hard bar installed and we have our sway bar links hooked up, we're going to install our shock here into our bracket. And what I'm going to do is we lowered the vehicle down here. If your vehicle's already on the ground, this will make it a lot easier. When ours was up in the air, we didn't want to teeter it on the lift. So I dropped it down. I put a jack underneath the rear and I'm going to jack up on the rear housing um, while the vehicle's on the ground and line the shock up with the hole there. Then we'll be able to put our bolt in, take our 21 millimeter and tighten everything up. So now I have the rear jacked up in place so that our shock lines up. I'm going to install our bolt through the back side here, get it started, put our nut in place. I'm going to take my 21 millimeter wrench and my 21 millimeter socket on my impact gun. Tighten that up. And now you're going to want to repeat this same installation procedure on the other side. That wraps up this review and install of our officially licensed Ram 3 inch front, 2 inch rear leveling kit for 0918 four wheel drive Ram 1500s without air ride. Thanks for watching, and for all things Ram, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.